realized, I, I might have interviewed you before, but I think you're still growing because now you're like 6'2". Oh, I right? wish. <laughs> right, uh, so what are you, uh, no seriously though, how tall are you now? Well, I've actually been in like this whole debate with Emil over how tall I am because he thinks he's a certain height, but I think I'm that height and he's, I don't know, it's, it's complicated. But I think I'm like 5'6 and 3'. No, no, you are like 6'2". Okay, so let's it, it might be the shoes though. Well, sure, always. Oh, maybe. there we go. Yeah, now yeah. I see. It. I, I understand. But like maybe like five seven. I say I'm five seven. What? Okay, let's jump into being serious <laughs> things. What has the last like year or two been like for you, going from project to project and sort of not like you've sort of won the actor's lottery in terms of getting to work with so many different filmmakers and in so many different genres. I. Uh, the last two years have been extremely exciting and and just. I don't know, really awesome. I mean, I've been very fortunate and have had some really cool opportunities. Um, but I have kind of gone nonstop for the last two years going project to project, like you said. Um, and it's just, it's funny because when I did my first movie, True Grit, I was 13 and the movie came out the same year that we shot it. So it was like a very quick turnaround and I was still coming off the high of making the movie and then it came out. So it was like this whole year of just madness. And then I went on to making, uh, to make my second film, Romeo and Juliet, and that came out like a, maybe, like a year or maybe over a year later. So the waiting process killed me for the longest time. And now it's awesome. Now I feel like I have, um, I've done enough in the last two years that I can kind of forget about them and then revisit them whenever they choose, whenever they sure. are able to come out. Um, so it's exciting to kind of, you know, invest all your your, your time and um, and your everything into a project that you love and then just kind of at the point to where you can't do anything, you kind of let it go and move on to the next and that's kind of what I've been, that's kind of what I've been doing. Jumping into why I get to talk to you today for your film, uh, 10,000 Saints. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the movie. One of the things I really appreciated about it is that the characters are not the norm that you see in movies. The dad is not trying to be all, you know, you can't do drugs. Sure. You know, uh, you're having a straight edge punk guy instead mm -hmm. of a punker, if you will. Right. Um, was that one of the things that drew you to the project? Or talk a little bit about that. There were so many things that drew me to this project. Um, I feel like, I mean, I I get very excited, of, like, about everything. Um, like, anything I read, I, I can find something that I love about it. Um, but rarely, I think, do you find something where you love everything about it. Um, and this was kind of that for me. I read the script, and I just... It just made such an impression on me just by, I mean, just by, like, reading the script in my room. And, and my, my parents read it, my team read it, and we all just, like, loved it. And I think it's because of what you just said, each of these characters are living a life that is so, like, imperfectly perfect. Um, it's all they know and it's their kind of perfect, but it's just, they're all so uh, complicated and flawed. Um, and I don't know, I think there was just so much, uh, so many challenges that really stood out to me while reading it. And I think, you know, the chance to work with the directors and, and the cast, um, really everything about it just drew me to it. Uh, there's a little bit of what we call drug use in the movie. In fact, that, actually, I'm going to venture to say a lot of drug use yeah. in the movie. Was that something that sort of, did that make you nervous? Or was that sort of like, I'm getting a little more grown up now, and this is something that, you know, and everyone, it's a huge part of society. Sure. You know? Um, I'd have to say both. Uh, you know, obviously, I mean, I read that and was completely uneducated on, on all things related to drugs. Um, so it required a lot of education and a lot of self-education, a lot of research uh, on my part. Um, but again, I think, you know, I am, I am getting older and I am growing as a person and as an actor. And I find that um, as time goes on, I, I'm more and more ready to sort of take on a challenge of a larger concept and, and the context being a little um, more mature. Um, and I think obviously with this film there's a lot of that and so I was I was just kind of up for the challenge altogether. What is it like for you uh, being at Sundance? Because it's obviously such a prestigious festival. Mm. Having your movie in like the first 24 hours, you know, premiere at the Eccles. Talk a little bit about what that experience is like. It's been incredible. This is my first time here. Uh, and to be here with this film is, is really, really exciting. And I was talking to Ethan about it earlier. Uh, Oh, you mean Ethan Hawke? Yes, Ethan Hawke. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, I was talking to Ethan Hawke about it earlier. Um, just about how, I mean, I've been homeschooled since uh, since middle school, and up until then, I, I've never really, like, belonged to 
a, a like a club or a, a sport or, or anything. I've never like you know been on on a team of sorts or whatever. And I think here I kind of finally feel like I'm a part of like a community, sure. um, which is like a really awesome feeling. You know, you walk the streets and you see your peers and and you're all you know sort of competitive but supportive and and just. I don't know. It's really, it's a really exciting thing to be here, and, and it's it's an honor. You have a pretty big movie coming out this summer as well. I do. I, mm -hmm. I think it's called Pitch Perfect Two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. might that might be that. Mm -hmm. um, what was that experience like for you, and getting to work with Elizabeth? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can imagine. Was, <laughs> right. No, it was honestly. Um, I mean, so crazy. I'm such a huge fan of the first movie, and it's kind of crazy because I think. I mean, just a quick sort of comparison. When I made um, when I made True Grit, uh, a lot of people would approach me that were fans of of the John Wayne version and um, share their thoughts on you know the new version or whatever. And I think it was funny because there were a lot of people that kind of um, were a fan of the first version and you know were a fan sure. of the second. And um, obviously, I didn't know about the first one before I knew about mine. Um, so I think with Pitch Perfect on, on sort of the same situation, I for once was kind of like a, a fan kind of from the beginning and to be a part of something that I feel like I've been a part of forever just because just because I've been a yeah. fan um, is really, really kind of exciting and um, to kind of like go through the initiation process and, and become a Bella um, was really, really exciting. I realized something, I, I completely forgot to everyone watching this interview will not have seen 10,000 Saints. Right. And we should totally do the service of talking about what the film is about sure. like in a general sense and, right. you know, a little more on your character. Um, yeah, so 10,000 Saints is basically a story of uh, kids growing up in the 80s um, in New York City. Um, and it's the whole, it's 80s punk. Um, and there's the straight edge, Hare, Hare Krishna core and um, all of that going on. And my character, Eliza, is... Uh, along with the other characters in the movie, just kind of trying to find herself and where she belongs. Um, and like we were talking about before, she's just, she's very, uh, they're all very flawed. And I think they find, um, they find each other uh, through, through their flaws and, and kind of learn to embrace them. Um, and something that I found so incredible with this movie is that, you know, it's an ensemble cast and there's so many different uh, sort of stories happening at the same time, but the way they intertwine is so incredible. And, and this is like the one movie I have a really hard time kind of explaining what it's about because it's about so much. Um, but uh, I don't know, I guess I can just say I'm really excited to be a part of it. Sure, it's, it's also like a slice of real life. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cookie cutter characters. No, not at all. You know, um, all. Was it a prerequisite that you had to be in Ender's Game to be in this movie? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but there's some similar cast. Sure, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, Asa and I, Asa Butterfield and I worked together on Ender's Game um, two years ago? Two years ago, wow. Something like that. Yeah, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and we've uh, we'd been in touch ever since Ender's Game. Like, we'd write each other all the time and, and you know, we'd run into each other. Uh, and I remember ha I'd read this script and he had read it and we were, I think, I don't know where we were in the world, but we were doing something, and um, we were just talking. I mean, we literally had like this fangirl sesh over this script. I mean, like it was hardcore. We were just freaking out about how good this was, and we were like, we have to make this happen. And um, it was so incredible working with him again in such a different sure. film. Um, again, like we've both kind of grown up as actors and, and as people, and we we were both kind of looking for a challenge, and, and to be able to take on a challenge and, and new territory with some someone that you know and someone you have history with is is always comforting and, and awesome. I have to touch on. Um, I actually think Ender's Game is a really good movie. Thanks. I think it is a. a, a it is very well done. I think so too. Yeah, Thank and uh, for the people that have not seen Ender's Game, I'm giving a little plug for that. Thank like, you. you uh, <laughs> but I'm definitely curious what. Uh, what else is coming up for you and what are you looking at for challenges in the future? Because you've sort of been able to work in a lot of different genres mm -hmm. and I would imagine that you are, are you trying to, you know, push into areas you've never done? Um, not specifically. Um, I think something that I kind of love about what I do is everything is very unpredictable. 
um, and very sort of spontaneous and spur of the moment. And I think uh, I did a Western at 13 when I had never even seen or heard of a Western before. And I went on to doing a science fiction film and Shakespeare and I, it was all, it was not planned and it was all very um, spontaneous again. So I think, I guess I'm just kind of excited to see what else is out there. Um, but in terms of challenges that I'm looking for, I guess just uh, none specific. Uh, I don't know, I think they, they will, they'll come, hopefully. I am very, very excited to see Kyle Newman's new movie, Barely Lethal. Thanks, me um, too. So what is the status of the film and what can you tell people about it and your character? So, Barely Lethal, <laughs> oh my gosh, I honestly, I have ha I had so much fun making that movie. So Kyle and I, I'm trying to think, man, it's been a while since we made. Oh no no no! It's been a year since we made that. Cause, okay. You're all, he's going no, back to I got you. Yeah, what we no, said no, it goes back to like yeah, yeah. a year ago. Um, yeah. No, uh, that movie uh, is about. I play a child uh, assassin who um, wants nothing but to to live a normal teenage life. Um, so she decides to escape on one of her missions and become a foreign exchange student and attend a regular high school. So you have someone who has no idea what high school is or the concept of high school or how things go uh, in the middle of it all. And it's, um, it's exciting and it's, it's humorous and a lot of stunt work, but um, I don't know, I had, I had such an amazing time making that film and I'm hoping it comes out like very soon. <laughs> I understand. Um, you are you, you. You like to use Twitter and Instagram and I stuff do, like yeah. that. I do. Yeah, I'm so, getting better at it too. So. I was going to say. So, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about our. Do you ever sit there and debate for ten minutes, like what you're going to tweet, or do you sort of just say "eff it" and throw no. it to the wind? Well, okay. <laughs> I'm now more the second option than I was the first. I used to. I used to literally just sit there forever and like just overanalyze it way too much. Um, but now I'm just like, you know what, like. Whatever, right? Just whatever. But um, I don't know. I think it's kind of it's fun. It's a it's a really it's a crazy uh, it's a crazy thing, Twitter. But it's um, it's cool. Yeah, I like it a lot actually. Yeah, do you? Oh, yeah, I really <laughs> I actually really do. It's an instant RSS feed. Like okay, you instantly yeah. know what's going on. That's true. Um, what are you? My last question for you. What are you getting ready to film, if anything, in 2015? Now that we're at the beginning of the year. I know. My gosh, it's crazy. Um, I have a I have a few things uh, that are you know lined up I guess you could say but um, are the contracts not signed uh yeah no they're everything's kind of still up in the air I get um, it. I've kind of been on a break ever since I made pitch perfect uh, that just took it out of me <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, um, no I've been I've been home since I made that movie it's been about three months so um, I'm just kind of like you know I've been chilling and I'm getting ready to go again so we'll see I understand thank you so much thank for your you. time thank and congrats you. on getting to be six foot two <laughs> thank I, you it's fantastic.